Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good, as we discussed, about the meaning of HR planning in last video, I will be further discussing its process, in this lecture. Human resource planning requires, some series of steps, to be followed in order to execute it. The first step of HR planning is, determining its objectives. The foremost step in every process, is the determination of the objectives, for which the process is to be carried on. The objective, for which the manpower planning is to be done, should be defined precisely, so, as to ensure that the right number of people, for the right kind of job are selected. The short-term objective could be like, hiring a specific number of person, for a specified period, long-term objective could be like hiring personnel, for expansion and diversification, and, training them for the same purpose. The objectives can vary across the several departments, in the organization, such as, the personnel demand may differ in marketing, finance, production, HR department, based on their roles or functions. Second step is, analyzing current manpower inventory. In this step, we have to analyze the current manpower supply, in the organization through the stored information, about the employees, in terms of their experience, proficiency, skills, etc. required to perform a particular job. Also, the future vacancies can be estimated, so, as to plan for the manpower from both the internal, and the external sources. Thus, it is to be ensured, that reservoir of talent is maintained, to meet any vacancy arising in the near future. Third step is, forecasting demand and supply of human resources. Once the inventory, of talented manpower is maintained, the next step is to match the demand, for the manpower arising in the future, with the supply or, available resources with the organization. Here, the required skills of personnel, for a particular job are matched, with the job description and specification. Trend Analysis Trend analysis is more appropriate, for an existing business, because, it requires historical staffing data, to make future staffing predictions. This creates a relationship, between past and future staffing needs, by linking the two using a performance, or, financial metric called an operational index. Ratio Analysis Ratio analysis uses elements, called causal factors that can be linked to and help, predict future staffing needs. A business might identify production, or, sales volume as a causal factor and estimate, for example, that it needs one customer service representative, for every five clients, or one production line worker for every 5,000 widgets. If projections determine, the business will handle 500 clients, or, produce 500,000 widgets over the coming year, forecasting sets demand at 100 employees for each. Supply Forecasting Supply forecasting techniques, often start internally for human resources. Replacement charts are a visual tool, for identifying internal candidates available and, qualified to fill demand estimations. Replacement charts include both, a hierarchical diagram, and information relating to current employee performance, education and an assessment of how ready the employee is, to move into upward or lateral position. External supply side forecasting, typically involves a labor market analysis that also considers hiring practice legislation, 
to avoid the possibility of facing a discrimination lawsuit. Fourth step is analyzing the manpower gaps. After forecasting the demand and supply, the manpower gaps can be easily evaluated. In case, the demand is more than the supply of human resources, that means, there is a deficit, and thus, new candidates are to be hired. Whereas, if the demand is less than supply, there arises a surplus in the human resources, and hence, the employees have to be removed, either in the form of termination, retirement, layoff, transfer, etc. Fifth step is employment plan or action plan. Once the manpower gaps are evaluated, the action plan is to be formulated accordingly. In a case of a deficit, the firm may go either for recruitment, training, interdepartmental transfer plans whereas, in the case of a surplus, the voluntary retirement schemes, redeployment, transfer, layoff, could be followed. Sixth step is training and development. The training is not only for the new joinees, but from time to time. After the employment plan, the training programs are conducted, to equip the new employees, as well as, the old ones with the requisite skills, to be performed on a particular job. And the last step is, appraisal of manpower planning. Finally, the effectiveness of the manpower planning process, is to be evaluated. Here, the human resource plan is compared, with its actual implementation, to ensure the availability of a number of employees, for several jobs. At this stage, the firm has to decide the success of the plan, and control the deficiencies, if any. Finally. I would conclude this lecture, by saying that, human resource planning is a continuous process, that begins with the objectives of human resource planning, and, ends with the appraisal, or feedback, and control of the planning process.